Hey guys, welcome back to Sudoku Maniacs. So today we are going to have a look at a classic Sudoku technique which is known as the W wing. Now yesterday I had shared a Sudoku on our social media pages asking our patrons to solve it, give it a try and I had informed obviously that I would be creating a walkthrough on how do we identify and use the W wing technique. Now, before we actually move on to the puzzle, let's have a look at how we identify a W wing in a classic Sudoku. Now, for a W wing to be used, we need to identify two cells which have only two possibilities and they are both the same numbers, though they may not share any constraint. That is, they may not be within the same box, same row or a same column. So here, for identification, I've just marked them as the digits A and B, and they are marked in green, uh, sorry, the gray cells, basically. So we have identified two cells where only one of A or B can be placed, right? Once we have identified that, we look at different, now again, as I'm saying, this is just for explanation, please do not treat this as a valid Sudoku. Now we try to look for another row or a column where exactly there will be two places where one of these digits will be placed. So here, hypothetically, I'm looking at row two where the digit can only be placed in either column two or column eight. Basically, what we are doing is we are looking at a row or column where one of these digits can be placed in, in only two cells. And both these cells will share a constraint, either a row or a column, with the two gray cells. Right? So here in this context, they are sharing the columns. And I have marked this relationship with a thin line so that it's easier to understand. Now these two cells I have marked in green. Correct? Now we have identified the positioning of the digits. Now here again, let me iterate. Exactly, it doesn't matter whether there's only two possibilities in those green cells or more than two. But what is important is in that row, the digit A can be placed only in either column two or in column eight. So here, it would not matter if this was also, I had an option C here or a E here. All right. This just, it simply doesn't make a difference. Now, how do we use this? So here what happens is, let's look. If row 8, column 2 was a B, the B, the number B that is, cannot be placed in any of the red cells, right? Now, what are these red cells that I've marked? They are basically body cells to both the gray cells. Right? They are sharing a constraint. So, if this is B, obviously the digit B cannot be placed in any of the red cells. But what if row 8, column 2 was an A? Alright? If this were an A, sorry, if this was an A, this would become a C, which will push the digit A to row to column 8. The reason being, A can only be placed in that row in one of these two cells, right? And if this were an A, row 7, column 8 would become a B. So now, again, because if this row 7, column 8 is a B, it shares the row and the box constraint with the red cells. So again, I cannot have B in one of these red cells. So what we see here is, irrespective of whether the row 8 column 2 is an A or a B, sorry, we cannot have a B in any of these red cells. And this is what the W wing is all about. All right. So now let's go ahead and see how this was used in yesterday's Sudoku that I had 
shared with you all. All right. So let's go ahead. Well, I know for sure one one. This has to be a one. This cannot be a one because we already got a one here. So that's a one. One one. This is not a one. This is a one. Okay. So we could place all the ones. Good enough. Seven seven. This cannot be a seven. This is a seven. Seven cannot be here. It can be here or here. Two places. Two places. Two places. All right. Five. Five. So that's a five. That's a five by classic rules, which makes this a five. This becomes a five, and this becomes a five again. So we could wrap up the fives. Six cannot be here. That's a six. That's a six. All right. Now for row seven, this is not a six. These two cannot be a six because we already got the six in the columns. This is not a six, so this is the only place for a six. Hmm. So what I'm missing here? Four, seven, and nine. So that's a four, nine, four, seven, four, seven, nine, three, three. This becomes a three, which makes this a pair of two and eight. So that's a Four nine, but then again, four in box two has to be in these three cells, which makes this a nine. This is a four and a four. So nine cannot be here. That is a nine. This is a two nine two eight nine for classic rules. This is a three by classic, and this again becomes a two. All right. Now what next? Six cannot be here. Six is in one of these two, so this cannot be a six. This becomes a six, seven. So that's a four nine, which makes this a seven and a seven. So this is a four eight, eight nine, four nine, two three four nine. Anything else that can be placed? Okay, one digit left. That's a four. Three eight nine is left. This is a three eight. Three eight nine. Three eight nine. Hmm. Two three eight nine. This is a three eight nine. Okay, three eight three eight nine. Sorry, this would be a three eight six. My bad. Two eight nine. Hmm. Two three eight six. Oh yes, nine cannot be here. Eight seven six five. Four, three. So this has to be a two. So three six eight, which makes this a three six three eight. All right. So this would be one two three is not possible. Four, five, sorry, six, seven, eight, and nine. Four six nine and this would be nine is not possible eight no seven six five four three and a two and this would be two and a nine now once we reach this stage. I'll just give it a pause for a couple of seconds to see if you can identify where we can have the W wing. Right. If you got that, congratulations. You are a master at Sudoku now. And for those who didn't, don't worry. It takes practice to identify these kind of things. So now look at row 2, column 1 and row 9, column 3. I have the pair of 3 and 8. So 
as per what we saw in that example, these are A and B. Now we need to find a constraint which is sharing the same row or a column with one of these repeating. And when I look at column 8, the digit 3 can only be placed either in row 2 or row 9. So if I were to follow the thin line, it would start from here, go up to here, here, and here. So now the common digit being 3, 3 becomes our A, right? Now if this is an A, okay, so first the common body cells for these two, right? R1, column 3 is a body cell to both these two and this entire column, right? These two cells. So we have to see what would happen here. If this were an 8, obviously 8 cannot be in row 8 or row 9 column 1 and row 1 column 3. But if this were a 3, this would become a 6, which would push the 3 to row 2 column 8, which would make this an 8, right? So which means irrespective of whether this is a 3 or an 8, from these body cells, I can safely remove the 8s. So this 8 is out. This 8 is out. Obviously, I can't have an 8 here. So let's see. Let's put the pencil marks. 9, 8, 7 gone. 6 is possible. 5, 4 is possible. 3, 2, 1 is possible. Now that we have done that, this forms a pair of 3 and 6, which gives me an 8. Right? And this would be 2, 4, 8, 1, 2, 3, this is a 4, 8. Now this was a difficult puzzle because along with what you say, <coughs> the W wing, it uses a lot of other advanced techniques. So now when I look at row 9 and row 2, it forms an X wing on the digit 3 because the 3 can only occur in two places in these two rows and that's in the same column. If you have not <coughs> watched the video of the X-Wing, just have placed the link on top of this video. Click on that. You can watch the video on the X-Wing as well. So because of this, from these two columns, I can remove the digit 3. Fair enough. What next? Now, there is another uniqueness technique that I always say is very good when you use solving a Sudoku in a competitive environment because every second matters. However, when I'm explaining techniques, I avoid using the uniqueness option so that we actually understand what we are trying to learn here. All right? Because by normal Sudoku, we know it has to have a unique solution. So if this is a pair of 2-8 and this is a 2-8, I know for sure if again I have a 2 8 option here, this would become a non unique Sudoku. And any Sudoku to be valid should have a single solution, right? So, in normal competitive environment, I would blindly rem remove the pencil marks 2 and 8 from here and place a 9. But since we are solving, or rather trying to learn the W wing and the other techniques, I am not using the uniqueness option here. I know it helps you solve faster. But again, as I said, I leave that for competitive environment where every second matters. But when I'm solving in leisure, I try to find and locate the technique so that the more I end up using those techniques, the better I would remember them. So coming back to here, let's complete all the pencil marks and see how we can proceed. So this would be a 2-8. This would be... 2, 3, 8, 9, right? 2, 3, 8, 9. This is a 2, 8, 9. So this would be an 8, 9. 2, 8, 9. Ah, now we again come find a XY wing here. In case, again, if you have not watched the video, don't know what the XY wing is, again, I'm adding a link at the top of the video. Click on that watch the video on the XY wing. So 
So I have a 4, 8, 4, 9 and an 8, 9. So if this is the 4, this would become a 9. But if this were an 8, this would be a 9. So whatever comes in row 1, column 9, the digit 9 would be either in row 3, column 8 or row 6, column 9. And we locate a common body cell which is common to both of these and that would be this cell, right? So we can safely eliminate the 9 from there and place a 2. So again, this becomes an 8, 9. So that's a 2, 3. So since this cannot be a 2, this becomes a 2. Oh, by normal classic also, this would have been a 2. So my bad. 8, 9, 3, 8, 4, 9, 6, 3. So that's a 2, 4. So 8 is out, which makes this a 4. 9, 8, 3, 2, 4. All right? That's 8, 9, 8, 9. Oh, I have an 8 here, so that's a 9 and an 8. 9, which makes this a 3. And this becomes a 2. 2, 8, 8, 9. Now, you see, we logically found how the 9 would go in row 8, column 6. But yes, competitively, just use that uniqueness option and you would be good to go. And that's right. System says we're correct. So if you want to try this out once again, I'm adding the link to this Sudoku in the description of the video. You can go ahead and try it online. So this Sudoku, if you notice, used the W wing, it used the X wing and the XY wing. And that is the reason this was rated as a hard Sudoku on our website. If you like this and would like me to provide you with more practice puzzles on this WY wing, do leave a comment and I will share another Sudoku on our social media page, which you can try solving and practicing the WY wing. Hope this video was helpful to you. So till the next time, happy solving.